Welcome to another episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, a lot of times I go to car shows and I see a car I like and I wait around for the owner to come around and they don't come around. I, I can't find them and it's very frustrating. And I've seen a couple of Woodies around town the last year or so and I always go, who built that? But I can never find the guy. Well, I found the guy. He does incredible work. His name is Scott Banowski. He runs uh, Hot Rods and Hobbies out of Signal Hill, California. Scott, come on in here. How you doing? Doing all right. Beautiful work. Thank you. This is the kind of resto mod I like because they look completely stock. And I'm one of those people, I always appreciate the original design of the car. I mean, I can appreciate chopped and channeled, but I like stock looking. And these are, I guess you'd say, lightly resto modded or, or so right. to make them a bit more drivable. Yeah, this car is basically totally stock, as is this one on the outside. Mm -hmm. Cosmetically, nothing's changed. This is the original wood, the original sizes, nothing's chopped, there's no wheelbase changes. Right. Both of them are lowered slightly, getting into the newer suspensions and whatnot. And the reality of it is, they were pretty awful to drive, even when new. True. I mean, big heavy box, kind of clunky, they tended to overheat. Now, if you're in the Ford Club, don't write me a letter. You know I'm telling you the truth. They were a little <laughs> tricky, they had mechanical brakes, still had mechanical brakes up to about, what, 37? That was yeah. still mechanical, wasn't it? So, what you've done here is you've taken something that was, for the most part in modern times, kind of undrivable and made it Fun. a functioning car that you can actually use. I still like stock, I, there's nothing wrong with that, <laughs> but uh, these are cars that probably would have been junked or whatever had you not rescued them. That's the way I look at it. It's not like you sure. start with some, a pristine 100 point car and turn it into a hot rod. Because this, Some of the Woody guys might not think so. Huh? Some of the Woody guys yeah. might not agree. No, I understand. I understand. <laughs> but I think it's just tastefully done. If somebody really wanted to put it back to stock, right. we try and respect that when we do these. Yeah. So you could go 100% original again. This one still has a stock frame underneath it. Oh, it does? It just okay. has modified front and rear suspension. Okay, so see, there you go. So don't put in the comments section what an animal I am. This is, it, you can go back to stock, and that's, that's what I like. Now, the real expensive thing on these cars is that wood, isn't it? Yeah, wood's not cheap. Yeah, I mean, by not cheap, we're talking, what, 50,000 to do the wood? The wood 60? on that car is gonna start at 30 grand and work its way up. Okay. Depending on types of wood, types of stain, things like that that go on, if you urethane them or if you, you know. Right, now, one like this, how much of the original wood can you still use? This one here is all brand new wood, as is this one. Okay. Sometimes we get woodies that come along and we use, uh, Sorry, I'm not the guy that does the wood. Right. Uh, Doug at the wooden car does the wood, but sometimes he tries to respect some of the original pieces of wood, sure. especially the way you were pointing at earlier, the tongue and groove sections. Yeah. So he tries to go real true to what the woody was. Well, this tongue and groove. Down was, to the details. This is what really impresses yeah. me. Was it done that way That's at the how factory it was done. originally? Yep. I mean, because that takes real craftsmanship. I it mean, does. That's, it's a very cool tool oh that does God. it too. Now, a lot of things about these woodies that people might not realize is, you, you can't really let these sit in the sun, can no, you? Not for very long. They yeah. don't like it. They get hot. Yeah. They get cold. They yeah. swell. They shrink. They crack. They start stain They start getting a sunburn just as quick as you would. Really? Yeah. You'll okay. start seeing the color of the wood change colors. Okay. So this is something you drive around eh, six o'clock at night. It's your cruiser car. Don't yeah. take it out on a 150 degree day. And although they, Matters did. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, if it's a 150 degree day, you got other problems. Yeah. 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 So you don't have to worry about that. Now, what engine is in this one? So this one, when the owner bought this car, Ron Cordini's got a nice collection of cars, and he says, well, I found this nice car, and it, it looked just like this when we got it, but it didn't drive well, it, didn't, it wasn't finished 100%, right. and it had a Chevrolet motor. So he decided, well, I gotta have a Ford in my Ford. Uh, yeah, well, yeah. So we brought it to us, and we just happened to have a little motor laying around. Uh, can we take, open the hood up and yeah, see what she looks like? Yeah, I'll show you what it is. But he's not a normal guy. Yeah. He likes horsepower. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we have a Roush V8 here. How many cubic inch, what is this? This is a 351. Three, oh, it's a 351, yep. okay. And uh, This is their nice little injected small block stacked injection. I love these, they look like Weber's obviously, but it's fuel Yeah, it's got a carbon vibe. Yeah, and we've got air conditioning in this car. Air conditioning, got, got power headers. steering. Boy, very clean underneath, very nice. Aluminum rear, and you could drive this car anywhere, couldn't you? Yeah, he drives a lot. He has a little trailer behind it that tows okay. around a little 
uh, 63 Triumph motorcycle. Oh, okay. And the trailer's matched to this as well. Which is kind oh, of, oh, it's yeah. fun for him to cruise around. You've got to have the matching trailer. <laughs> you have to have the matching trailer. Here we can close this hood. But the one we're going to focus on today and the one we're going to drive is this one over here. Now, this is what, 37? It's a 1937 Ford. Okay, 37 Ford. I love the wires. Are those, those are modern interpretation of the original Yeah, wires, these, are ex these are a reproduction of the original. I love the, yeah, those look really, really nice. Now, you did this one. Who's the owner of this one? So this one is owned by Eric Johnson, who right. owns Woody's Diners. Okay. Um, the, this project started at the wooden shop and came to me as a project. The wood guy got lost. He goes, Scott, I need your help. Right. So I went and visited. And the, if you've ever seen a Woody naked, it's a cowl and a floor pan, right. and that's it. Okay. So he put the roof with proper lengths of a 37, and the roof is overhanging by three inches. Right. That meant the cowl was in the wrong spot. Whoever okay. did the rust repair started the fabrication, oops, when they made the floor pans for the rust repair and the firewall. Okay. Well, so we came into play. Let's meet Eric. Eric, come on in. Eric Johnson. Nice to meet you. You're a Johnson with a Woody. There's I'm a joke in there somewhere, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not even going to touch that. So you own a diner, Woody's Restaurant, and oh. this is obviously must be parked in front of the diner. Uh, I park it, well, not lately. I, I do yeah. park in front of there. I've owned the car for about 25 years. Oh, okay. And, and it was uh, completely stock when I first picked it up. And I drove it for 10, 15 years, but I got tired of calling a friend of mine to pick me up and tow me back in because it was always breaking down right, on me. Right, okay. And where do you see the, the interior, the yeah. roof of this car? It looks like you're in some... Yeah. Some sort of uh, sportsman's lodge yeah. somewhere, you know. It's just nicely, nicely done. Well, each piece is custom made. I mean, he did have the old door that came off yeah. as the as a sample, but each one, each each piece of wood is, is custom made for the tower. Now, Scott, tower. when he comes in and he says to you, uh, "I want to resto mod this," does he come in with his idea, or do yeah. you, does he come in with a blank slate and you tell him what you think you should do? So, How does it work? what it came in is he. I asked him questions about what he liked about it before. He told me he hated driving it because it broke down. Right. <laughs> so the modern idea came in, and he just happened to have a Mustang 5.0 motor laying around. Okay. He happened to already purchase a chassis that wasn't complete, but he had a newer chassis for it. He had a disc brake package and a front and rear end package, okay. all from Kugel. So this thing has front and rear independent. So we put all those pieces together, but he said, I still want to look stock. Do not make this car drag it on the ground low. Right. Make it comfortable. I want all six rows of seat or six passenger seat in it. I have uh, five kids, and if I made a car that I couldn't fit all my kids in, I'd be a dead man. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> now, did you keep all the original pieces as well? Uh, we have most of them all, yes. I oh, do cool. have the old Very frame. Good. I have everything. Okay. So how long did a restoration like this take? <laughs> well, I started it. Um, uh, this probably took about eight, nine years. So you had no kids when you started? Uh, I had no kids when I started, okay. pretty much. All right. <laughs> so, so, so tell me how the process works. Is the wood done first, or do you do the chassis, and then it goes back to the wood guy, or did you get it with the wood and everything done like this, and then you put the mechanicals so in? So the, the way it should work is the chassis should be done and square and straight, and the body should be done and square and straight within that chassis. Okay. Then the wood guy can build his wood. Right. Then he can take it off, and then we could do all of our other goodies, our awesome. fabrication, our paint work, all okay. that. Yeah. Then it would finally go back to the wood guy for him to reinstall the wood. Because while he's got the wood fitted to the car, he then has to take it back apart and start staining it all. Right, okay. Or varnish on this case. So you don't, you don't varnish it on the car. You no. do the pieces no. individually. No. Okay. And, and it takes 30, 40, 50 coats of varnish. Wow. So, and it's only five to 10 at a time. So it takes a long time. So which, which is a longer restoration? The mechanical drivetrain or the wood body? Which takes longer? Are they about the same? They're probably about the same okay. on a normal situation. So that's a, what, a year? Each? Something uh, like yeah, that? about a year and a half each, probably. So you, sometimes you can end up with a two-year build on something like this. Okay. Um, when things overlap or downtime, waiting on something. Yeah, it's a shame because, you know, a lot of woodies wind up getting scrapped because it's just too crazy expensive to do the wood. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. If you it's have another your, car. Yeah, if you have a piece of furniture <laughs> done, well, have a, piece, have a dresser or something done, and you get an idea what, what it costs to do the wood. Oh, my God. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, you can't take it out in the rain or anything like that. Now, this one, how many miles you put on it since the restoration? Because there's not a crack or ripple in the wood. Have you driven it much? I have not driven it much. We just finished it. I think okay. I have maybe a couple hundred miles on it. Okay. And I've All got right. a couple hundred prior to him, so. Okay. Oh, so you, you might have four or five hundred on it. Four or five hundred. Yeah. Okay. I always drive him before I hand him over. I don't want him to get broken down. I'd rather break down first. <laughs> and, and what you is, never know what fails on that test drive. <laughs> what is the wood way? I mean, let's figure if this was a stock car with a steel body, it might weigh, what, 
3,400, 3,600 pounds. How much heavier is the wood? Is it way heavier? You know, I think they're probably about the same. Okay, all right. All right. Uh, unless it's a big bulky car like uh, a Chrysler where they have big thick doors. Right. These are really skinny doors. If you open it up, there's there's not much to this. Oh, look at that. I see. Yeah, it's like a closet door. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But on the later model ones, they start getting really big. I know, the big Chrysler, they, they have, it's like yeah. this thick, isn't it? Yeah. And what kind of wood is this? Uh, oh, it's okay. uh, mahogany. Oh, it is mahogany. Yeah, ash, okay, wow. Well, and see, these are two different grains. This is a pattern grain. This, right. one, this one's got yeah. waves in it going up and down. They call that curly wood or something like that. I think it's got a couple like different that, names yes. for it. Have air conditioning too? Yes. Yep. Oh, very cool. Automatic transmission, but you kept the original style shifter. I kept the original. I wanted it to look as much stock as, as possible. Yeah, really nice. Well, you've got So the gauges are stock. They've just been converted to 12 volt. Oh, okay. And right. re-silk screen. Uh, right. The steering wheel is a replica of the original because the other one was broken so poorly. Right, right. But all the dash is totally stock. Minus the, the knobs are different because we added knobs. You know, when I was a kid in the 60s, a teenager, you could buy the real ones for 350, 400 bucks. The wood would be rotted out. Yeah. And guys would use them as parts cars or depot hacks or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they built quite a few Model T woodies, but you don't see many of those around anymore. Uh, yeah, there's, there are a few still out there. Yeah, when you go yeah. to specific woody meats, they'll, they'll be out there. Is this a uniquely California thing, do you think? Is it, I mean, I know there are some back east, but most of the ones I seem to see around. I think the be. majority are in California, but you go down to Florida or up in even Connecticut has yeah. quite a few woodies. Uh, yeah, now, uh, I imagine there. Florida is so humid, that's got to be the worst for the wood, is it? Uh, you, it makes it hard to open the doors. Yeah. <laughs> They'll swell. Yeah, yeah. You said a Mustang 5 liter, can we take a look? Yes. Okay, open, yeah, let's open the hood. Okay, well that's easy to work on, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's no problem getting in there. Oh man. Is that all it opened on the original car as well? No. It opened a little bit higher in the original car. Because I'm going to say, how do you get to the flat? How do the you original get to the ones had a, had a little folding rod on the side, and yeah. commonly people would just try and close the hood, and they'd fold all these hoods. So oh. most of these 37s yeah. had their hoods folded in half or cracked okay. on the side. So we made two prop rods. Now, is the engine stock, or has it been modified? It's a rebuilt Street Performance 5.0 Mustang motor, basically okay. what it is. So what are we looking at, 350 horse? About 420. Oh, 420. Okay. Oh, very nice. Okay. So the engine is what year approximately? Late 80s, early 90s. Oh, late 80s. Okay. And a big aluminum radiator, condenser in the front there. Mm-hmm. Boy. Packed in there. Barely fits. Let's take it for a ride. <laughs> Got plenty of, but you know, it's not something you want to go do burnouts in. No, it doesn't feel right when you do a burnout, no, no, but it does. But it, <laughs> it is nice to feel that power in reserve yeah. that you never would have had. It's nice when you get on the freeway, yeah, people and of course think, the ability oh, okay. to stop as well. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it's such a pleasant environment with this wood. I mean, it's really, really nice. You know, it's funny, it's ironic, these are so expensive to do, yet when they were built, it was one of the cheaper Fords, wasn't it? It wasn't an expensive car, was it? I don't think they were expensive at all compared to a normal car. Yeah. Boy, it handles nicely. We would have been... Uh... He would have been rolling around a little. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People forget when these cars were built, the speed limit was 45 miles an hour. And dirt roads, yeah, rough maybe roads. 50. No air conditioning back in 1937. That wasn't invented until 1940 or 41, <laughs> which was Packard, by the way. Kind of fun you sit up high like a modern SUV. Yeah, you see everything. So you guys did the uh, Viper engine one too, eh? Yes. Yeah, that was a beautiful job. That's a great car. Gary has a lot of fun driving that car around. Yeah, yeah. Here's that car we were just talking about with the, uh, what year is it, a 48? 48 Chrysler Town and Country Convertible. 48 Town and, 48 <laughs> Town and Country Chrysler Convertible with a Viper engine. With a Viper engine. <laughs> Another challenge on these to get them to be somewhat quiet once you put horsepower on them. Yeah. You know, this, these wooden things become like a stereo box, right, like a speaker right. box, so yeah, they resonate yeah. everything. So this has four mufflers under it, and you, you can still hear the exhaust tone. You ever do anything with the original upholstery, the sort of mohair Sometimes, type? Yeah. yeah.
like you're driving a small gymnasium. <laughs> that corner bad. Got a little, little bit of body roll. <laughs> little roll. It's no P1 McLaren, but it's very nice. I like how the fact that when this wheel is straight, just I hate it when the steering wheel is off center. That drives me crazy. Well, let's explain what we have here. Okay, uh, what are the different controls? So these four here are AC controls, our fan switch, our heater switch, our cold air switch, and our mode switch to move it from defrost to floor vents. Uh, this one here is our headlight switch. This is a charging adapter or cigarette lighter. Got it. And our wiper switch here. And then it's a push button start. Right, right here. We've added a turn signal switch because these cars never had them. Right, and a horn in the middle. And a horn. There you go. And the original gauges as well. Original but just gauges updated. restored yeah, and updated yeah. to 12 volt. Yeah. Now at 55 or 60 with the standard flathead, this thing would be screaming. Yeah, you'd be tacking pretty high. You'd be yeah, maxed yeah. out. So now you can drive it at modern highway speeds with modern braking and suspension. Yeah, you still hear the wood. You still hear the wood <laughs> creaking. You ever get those customers you can't please? I don't want the wood creaking. Yeah. And they yell at you, yeah. Funny is uh, the other 39 that's over there. The customer doesn't like rattles or squeaks. Yeah. I told him I said don't buy a Woody. Yeah. So he bought it, and he's gotten used to the rattles of the wood. Right. And the squeaks of the wood, but he doesn't like the rattle of anything else. So we got to make sure the glove box doesn't make yeah. no other stuff. He's you turn up the radio. <laughs> exactly. But this car is not boring to drive. It's kind of fun to drive. You got a commanding view of the road. What you said, these are free, free floating on here, huh? So these are not, uh, they're not screwed into this from right. the top. They're screwed in every other one, I think. Yeah. And at the front. This is what really impresses me, the tongue and groove. Look at that. I mean, it almost looks like grain. This is a real California car. It's weird to see these not in California. Yeah, I haven't seen them in too many other places. But No, no. Definitely a fair weather car. Which Woody was the nicest built from the factory? Was it the Chrysler's? Because those were expensive. Uh, well, and the Chrysler's had a ton of options. You right. could get any kind of wood graining, any kind of wood, any kind of color. Yeah. Any interior color, so they were, they were over the top. I remember they had the, the radio where you used to uh, have the stickers, you put the buttons. Uh -huh. you put the, uh, you'd find out what radio station in your area. Enjoyable experience that is. Uh, Scott did a beautiful job. Just wonderful, wonderful work. You know, the fun thing about this website, I get to meet so many craftsmen that live really within 40 or 50 miles of my shop. I wasn't aware of your shop. I'd heard of it, but I didn't really realize the level of work you're doing. Really terrific. Scott, thank you. Thank you. I want to thank Eric Johnson, the Johnson with the Woody, as I call him. <laughs> and you own the Woody's Diners, right? Woody's Diners, yes. Now, now see, so you're in Orange County, you got to eat at Woody's Diner because you got to pay for it. He has to justify the cost of this. <laughs> to the wife. We still don't know how much it could cost because the wife watches this. So. But eat at the diner and that will offset the cost of the Woody. So I want to thank both you guys for bringing this thank by. You. It was really, really fun. This is a uniquely California experience. So we'll, we'll see you guys next week.